240,000 plus vote lead, but it's early. Only 8% of the estimated vote has come in from Pennsylvania. In Michigan, Kamala Harris in the lead there with 61.1% of the vote. Donald Trump with 37.1% of the vote. Harris with a 58,000 plus vote lead. Still early there as well. Only 4% of the estimated vote has come in from Michigan. In Battleground, Georgia, Donald Trump in the lead with 55% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 44.4% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 275,000 plus vote lead. That's with almost half the vote in, 48% of the estimated vote in from Battleground, Georgia. In Battleground, North Carolina, Kamala Harris in the lead there with 52.1% of the vote. Donald Trump with 46.5% of the vote. Harris has a 36,000 plus vote lead. That's with only 11% of the estimated vote in from North Carolina. It is still very early in North Carolina. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, Harris in the lead there, 51 percent of the vote. Donald Trump has 47.2 percent of the vote. Harris with a 58,000 vote or so lead. That's with more than a third of the vote in from Commonwealth Virginia, Virginia, uh, 34 percent uh, of the estimated vote. John King. Jake, starting to fill in more on the map. You started to figure out where we go. I want to caution everybody, if you look at the map, as we start to fill in more as we move at least to the Midwest, uh, you have Kansas blue at the moment. Very reliably red state. We'll count the votes, see what happens. Remember, it shocked us after Dobbs with the referendum there. Ohio is still blue. Uh, we expect as more votes come in, that will swing back. But again, that's why we count votes. If you look at this big picture at the moment, uh, Donald Trump in an unusual position. We'll see if it holds up. At the moment, he's leading in the popular vote. He, of course, lost the popular vote in both 2016 and by a much larger margin, more than 7 million votes in 2020. At the moment, he's 2.5 million votes ahead in the popular vote. But that's about 17% of the national vote. So we have a lot of counting to do tonight into tomorrow and beyond it will take so let's wander through some of the battleground states let's start in the biggest battleground powers of all pennsylvania 19 electoral votes right there uh, the vice president at the moment with a big healthy lead guess what pennsylvania is not going to end that way uh, even if she wins it it's just too competitive a state uh, so why is it such a big lead because most of the votes are from right down here in philadelphia and the democratic suburbs but can still be instructive number one we're still at the same place, 87%, 17% there at 87%. We haven't moved in Philadelphia. She's ahead of where President Biden was four years ago, but that's a tiny percentage of votes in their early votes. So let's move up here. This is the most competitive of the three caller counties. It's Delaware, Montgomery, and Bucks. Bucks has become the most competitive. At the moment, the vice president is getting 66% if you round up in Bucks County, but again, it's 11%. If the vice president ends up above 60% in Bucks County at the end of the night, she's going to win the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but it is very, very early. Why do I say that? Because Joe Biden won it last time with just 52%. This is a very tough, this is a good, strong Trump base in Bucks County. So what you see at the moment is mostly early votes, but we watch and we see. One, another place here is Montgomery County. Again, when I started doing this, this is where Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush won elections. No more. It's a Democratic stronghold now. But you see right now, uh, it's very early on, eight, 800 votes when you add that up. Uh, so we won't even bother with the comparison. And then you just pop down to Delaware County. Uh, same issue, about 15% of the vote in. So we can take a look here. I was just here the other day in Delaware County. And you see it's overwhelmingly Democratic. But you do see some pockets of Trump support. This is one of the places it's a key test. He's not going to win, Delaware County. Can he improve his standing in the suburbs just a little bit? That's Donald Trump's big challenge. Improve your standing in the suburbs just a little bit. 15%. He's at 24% right now. If you go back four years ago, he was at 36%. So if he stays where he is, he's in trouble in Pennsylvania. But again, these are very, very, very early results. So we've been looking at this from the vice president's perspective. Let's come back to 2024 and look at it from the former president's perspective. And that is these red areas out here. So this is Butler County. This is where the rally was where the assassination attempt was made on the former president's life. Very small uh, smattering of votes right here. But this is Trump country. This is Trump country. 81% of the vote at the moment right now. You go back four years ago, 67%. So let's see. Let's see. It's very, very early. So it's not, I'm not making the comparison now. It's just one of the places we lay down markers and we look. Does Donald Trump match or exceed his 2020 performance in these smaller red rural counties? That is his building block in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and in all of the battlegrounds. He runs it up in the small rural areas and he goes from there. Let's move down. North Carolina. Jake, I'll take it back to you. I'll be back in a minute. That's right. I have a projection now. CNN has a projection. And CNN can project that South Carolina will go to Donald Trump. South Carolina, as expected, to the Republican with nine electoral votes. Let's take a look at how that affects the electoral map. Donald Trump in the lead with 99 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 27 electoral votes. There are 270 electoral votes 
needed to win. Neither of them are particularly close, though obviously Donald Trump in the lead. John? And Jake, as you come back, you just mentioned the Electoral Count, so let me just wander over here. It's very early in the night. I just want to wander over for a minute. Uh, these are the ones, the, project, the states we have projected and called. And you see, as Jake just noted, 99 for Trump, 27 for the vice president. We're very early. It takes 270 to win. Uh, the thing you look at when you look at this map is, are there any surprises? And the answer as of now is no. Uh, that the states that are red are states that Trump has won consistently in the Republican states, and the states that are blue are Democratic states. So we have no surprises on the map at the moment because those those states, none of those states, are considered battleground states. But you always watch on election night. Every now and then, you get a surprise. At the moment, the map is filling in as expected as we await for the states that tend to be the swing states and the battleground states. Just one point I want to note as we look big picture. Last time we were here, just a few minutes ago, Ohio was blue. Ohio has turned red now. Uh, Donald Trump with a very narrow lead, but as the trend, as the, as the election day votes start to come in, states that are reliably one color or the other, one party or the other, tend to go back to their DNA. Uh, Trump now narrowly ahead in Ohio. We'll keep an eye on that as we do it. So let's look at the battleground states that will matter most. If this, as that map fills in over there, who can get to 270? Uh, Georgia is one of the big pieces of the puzzle. And again, in a state decided by 11,779 votes, I believe, uh, four years ago, Donald Trump ahead by more than 300,000 votes, or about half the count. Half the count is good, but there's still a long way to go. Just want to check. This is this is where the Democrats have to run it up. Remember, Cobb County, last time we checked, Trump was winning. Harris is now winning with 57% of the vote, 57% of the count in. She's got 57% of the vote. You move over. That's around where Biden was four years ago, a little tiny bit above. That's what she wants to do. You come over to DeKalb County, Biden was at 83. The vice president is at 75. Very early in the count there. Keep an eye on that. She'd have to make that, that, that would be a big, that would be, if she's underperforming Biden there, that would be a big deal. And again, just want to show you the Trump base. I'm going to just pick one randomly. Wilcox County, I did that one before, so let's pick another one. Pulaski County, right above it, 95% of the vote in, 70% for Donald Trump. Not a lot of votes, but this is what he does in rural America, 69% four years ago. So a little bit, a little bit. 100 votes here, 100 votes there can matter as you're trying to win a battleground state. We'll see how that one plays out. Let's just pop up to North Carolina. See again, 51% to 48% if you round that up. This is an incredibly competitive state. And again, I just want to do to check in on how Trump is doing in these small rural counties. 80% of the vote in Macon County. He's got 68% when you round up. You come back here, 68%, a little running a tiny, tiny bit behind, but that's about equal to where he was before. So you're looking right now, battleground North Carolina, battleground Georgia, battleground Pennsylvania. Come back to 2024. Some votes coming in slowly in Battleground, Michigan, as well. As we continue to count and go, just checking to see if anything else is changing up. Let's take a quick look at Michigan before we have to go here. 59%, but look at all the votes are here. Let's check here. This is Kent County, a key suburban area. If Trump can hold on to this one, he'll win Michigan, but we're very, very early in the count, Jake. All right, John. Well, polls are about to close in deep red Arkansas, where six electoral votes are at stake. And CNN can project that Donald Trump will win the state of Arkansas, as expected. Donald Trump will take home Arkansas's six electoral votes. Let's take a look at the electoral map count now. Donald Trump in the lead with 105 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 27 electoral votes. There are 270 electoral votes needed to win. Let's take a look at where there are states that have not been projected yet in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Kamala Harris has seven. of the estimated vote in Georgia counted. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, Kamala Harris in the lead with 50% of the vote. Donald Trump with 48.2% of the vote. Harris with a 30,000 plus vote lead. That's with more than a third, 39% of the estimated vote in from Virginia. 
uh, counted in the state of New Hampshire. Kamala Harris in the lead, 54.1% of the vote. Donald Trump with 45.3% of the vote. Harris with a 13,000 plus vote lead. That's with an estimated 18% of the estimated vote out of New Hampshire counted. In Ohio, Donald Trump in the lead, 50.3% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 48.9% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 36,000 plus vote lead. That's with an estimated 41% of the estimated vote in from Ohio. And now we can make a projection in a closely watched race for governor. CNN can project that Democrat Josh Stein will be elected governor of North Carolina. Stein is the current attorney general. We are projecting that he will defeat his Republican opponent, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, who had Donald Trump's endorsement. Robinson's history of controversy became a major issue in the race, including recently uncovered, shall we call them, inflammatory posts on a porn website from more than a decade ago. Again, CNN projects the Democrats will hold on to the governor's office in North Carolina with Attorney General Josh Stein replacing the term-limited Governor Roy Cooper. John. And Jake, one of the big questions in North Carolina, as you know, is Democrats were somewhat hopeful that maybe the scandal in the governor's race might help them, and the Trump campaign was nervous uh, that with the Republican candidate Robinson in trouble, would Trump be impacted by that? So let's just take a quick look at it. You see North Carolina, this is the presidential race, very close at the moment. We're only at about 15% of the statewide vote counted. So a long way to go in a state we expect to be tight. It is tight from the get-go in the early count. I just want to switch over and look at the governor's race. Excuse me, it's down here. Look at the governor's race. So you have the, the Democrat here at 49.4, the Democratic candidate for president. If you look at the governor's race, Josh Stein winning 56% of the vote. So you have a lot of ticket splitting happening in North Carolina right now. People who are voting for Donald Trump who simply could not vote for Mark Robinson for governor. And so at least at the moment, uh, not the benefit that the Harris campaign was hoping for, at least no evidence of a giant benefit that the Harris campaign was hoping for in North Carolina from the scandal around the Republican gubernatorial candidate. So what do we have here in the key Sun Belt battleground, North Carolina, Georgia, and then we go west, Arizona and Nevada, uh, 648 votes ahead. That's why we call them battleground states. Uh, but we're only at 14% of the count. And so you come out here, let's just go west to east, 73% uh, for the vice president, 26% reporting. You just go back and check. Joe Biden came close here but lost, so she's overperforming him at the moment there. Uh, and then you want to come over to the biggest population center of Charlotte in the suburbs. That's Mecklenburg County. The president got 67% when you round up four years ago. You come back here, she's getting 70%. So in the early count, it's neck and neck. It is. This is one of the great tug-of-war states in the United States right here and we'll continue to count, still at 14%. Let's pop down to Georgia. We're at 53%. We were at 50% last time. So we're moving up, but moving up slowly. And again, it's trademark Trump, just running it up in the rural areas. And so we pick one randomly. You come down here, Bacon County, 95% in. So we're close to the full count here, but look at that, 87% of the vote, right? This is how he does it. It's 4,000 votes to 600 votes. In a state this big, you say, oh, that's not such a big deal. When you do it in county after county after county, uh, that adds up. So just go back and take a look. 86 percent. So Donald Trump is at least matching his performance in most of these rural counties of four years ago when Georgia was incredibly close. So if he matches in the rural areas, all he has to do is improve a little smidgen in the suburbs or in the urban areas uh, and you're more competitive in the state. So let's just check the suburbs around Atlanta because this is where if, if Trump is performing in the rural areas, as it looks like he is, turning out his base, then the race will be settled here by the margins in the suburbs. Only 16 percent of the vote in, so let's be careful. 60 percent for Vice President Harris, or again, more important almost, is can Trump move his numbers up? 39% in the suburbs right now, Gwinnett County suburbs, it was 40%. So at the moment in this one suburb, he's got some work to do. We'll see if he can do it. Let's move down here to DeKalb County. This is the most Democratic of the suburbs just to the east of Atlanta. 83% uh, President Biden had in winning the state four years ago. Uh, the Vice President running a little bit behind that right now, but look, that's not even 1,000 votes. Uh, so we have a ways to go before we have to worry about any comparison there. Let's drop down to Clayton County, the Atlanta airport just south of Atlanta. Big Democratic stronghold. This was critical to Biden coming back in Georgia as they counted the votes in 2020. Trump had an early lead, but as the count went on into the day after and the day after that, Clayton County was one of the places where Joe Biden got a lot of votes. And you see 85 percent for the vice president, about three quarters of the count, 76 percent right there. So how does that compare to 2020? Uh, about the same, right? You got 85 when you round that up. You got 85 when you round that up. So here we go in Georgia again. Uh, so far as you go through it, you've got a very competitive race. Uh, so that one's competitive. Let's come out of there. I want to go up and look at Michigan. We haven't spent any time here yet. Only 6% of the vote in. So be careful about anything. But you're trying to look and see what happens 
Again, this is Kent County. Both campaigns focus on Grand Rapids and the suburbs. Used to be a reliably Republican area. Uh, Trump at the moment, but look again, we're under 1,000 votes right there. Trump at the moment, but here's what you're running against, right? Joe Biden gets 52 percent. If you go back to 2016, Donald Trump carried this with 48 percent in a state. You know, if, if Michigan's going to be very close, it's 154,000. It was the biggest lead Biden had in any of the battlegrounds four years ago. But if you're going to be competitive for Donald Trump, you'd like to turn this red. If you can't turn it red, you would at least like to narrow that margin for Donald Trump. So we'll watch and see how this plays out in 2024. Come back to today's map here. It was just on the texting. I was going to say on the phone. It's texting. It's the same thing. Uh, with a key Democrat out in Michigan who said they're a little nervous about here, not Monroe County, but Wayne County. He said they're a little nervous about Wayne County. I think turnout among Democrats might be down a little bit in Wayne County. That would be a problem. The African-American vote in Detroit, the student vote, Wayne State, places like that, absolutely critical for the Democratic coalition. So we'll see what we get. Wayne County is always late to report, so it's going to be a while. We'll see if that's true. If those fears are true among Democrats, that maybe turnout is down a little bit here. If it is, if it is, then the vice president has to make it up here, Oakland County, again, 20 years ago, a Republican suburb, 58% uh, right now. We're just approaching 40%. 50, 58%. Remember, Joe Biden carried Michigan four years ago to 56%. That would help. If you're above Biden, maybe you get a little math to make up if you're losing a little bit in the city. We'll see if that plays out as we thought. And I just want to pop down to bring this issue on the table as well. Washtenaw County, absolutely critical. Young voters were critical to the Biden coalition in 2020, even more critical when Governor Whitmer won re-election in 2022 and the Michigan Democrats made gains in the legislature. Washington County is the home of Ann Arbor. It is the home of the University of Michigan. Been there four times over the last year. And it's gone now. The school won't allow a protest anymore. But student protests here about the Israel-Hamas conflict had hurt President Biden. The question was, after the switch to Vice President Harris, could she heal that wound in the Democratic coalition? So you see her at the moment, 22 percent. So we have a long way to go. 60% uh, for the vice president there right now, 72% for the president of the United States. If that number stays that way, that's a problem. That's a problem. If 73%, if you round that up in Washington County, 61% or 60% actually, you can't round that up quite yet. So that's something to keep an eye on as we go forward. And I just want to come out just the other day, I was also here, Michigan State is in Lansing in Ingham County. And again, you're trying to get students to turn out. Uh, was at a Trump phone bank here. Uh, mostly young men, college students, young men there. 50% for the vice president right there. You come back in time and 65% for the president of the United States. So as we go through battleground Michigan, it's early. It's early. So I, I'm not, you know, we, the, this comparison is not in cement yet, but these are the places you want to watch. At the moment, in a couple of key places, that would be Ingham County and Washington County, Jake. She's trailing the president. So she needs to, if you want to get your math up in Michigan, watch those in the hours ahead. All right, now let's check in on the all-important race to 270 electoral votes as we head into another round of poll closings. So with Donald Trump is in the lead here with 105 electoral votes, Kamala Harris has 27 electoral votes. Obviously, 270 are needed to win. We are far from that. Obviously, Donald Trump's still in the lead. But now let's bring you another key race alert. In North Carolina, Battleground North Carolina, Donald Trump in the lead there. 52.2% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 46.6% of the vote. Donald Trump taking the lead there in the first time this night. Uh, this with uh, Donald Trump has a 69,000 plus vote lead. That's with about a fifth of the vote in, 21% of the estimated vote in from Battleground, North Carolina. And Battleground, Michigan, Kamala Harris in the lead with 56.9% of the vote. Donald Trump has 41.2% of the vote. Kamala Harris currently has 59,000 plus more votes. That's with 7% of the estimated vote. It's still very early. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the all-important battleground, Kamala Harris in the lead there with 69.8% of the vote. Donald Trump has 29.3% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 323,000-plus vote lead, but that's only 11% of the estimated vote in. It's still very early in Pennsylvania. In battleground Georgia, Donald Trump in the lead, 55.6% of the vote. Kamala Harris has 43.8% of the vote. Donald Trump has currently a 339,000-plus vote lead. That's with more than half of the vote in. In battleground Georgia, 54% of the estimated vote in from uh, Georgia. Now uh, we're standing by for the uh, second largest wave of poll closings just minutes from now at 9 Eastern when a total of 163 electoral votes are at stake in 15 states. Remember, 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. All voting is about to end in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, 
Kansas, Louisiana, the battleground state of Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, Texas, battleground Wisconsin, and Wyoming. As I mentioned, Michigan and Wisconsin are the two battlegrounds on the line in the hour ahead. Pillars of the Democrats' so-called blue wall that crumbled in 2016 but was rebuilt to help seal President Biden's victory four years ago. Out west, Arizona is another major presidential battleground that we're watching. We're heading into a high-stakes hour in the Harris-Trump contest with polling places about to close in three states that could decide the race. Let's go to Abby Phillip at Harris Campaign Headquarters in Washington. Uh, and Abby, uh, voting is about to end in three battlegrounds. What's the outlook in the Harris campaign? Yeah, Jake, I mean, I, I think the banner that you guys have right now is pretty much where the Harris campaign is. It is early in the night, and they're not seeing any clear picture of where this race is headed just yet. For that reason, they are really focused on the battleground of Pennsylvania because that really becomes the linchpin of a strategy to get to 270. If they get Pennsylvania, the rest of the path becomes much more clear. So uh, as I've been talking to people tonight, they're really waiting to see how these results, as they are coming in, really shape the picture. But right now, it's really not that clear to them. And I just want to be transparent about it because they're, they've got great numbers, but they're not willing to go out on a limb on any of this stuff just yet. In Pennsylvania, though, I think what I am hearing is a lot of optimism. They're seeing good numbers out of Philadelphia. Uh, the local officials there are, are suggesting that Harris could exceed what Biden did in that, uh, in that city. And if she's able to do that, that would make, again, her path to winning that state much more clear, Jake. All right, Abby Phillip, thanks so much. Let's go to West Palm Beach, Florida now, where we find Caitlin Collins. And Caitlin, what is the Trump campaign going to be looking for in the next round of poll closings? Well, Jake, you just mentioned Wisconsin, and that is obviously a state that they are going to be watching closely tonight. I've talked with several campaign officials. They're not expecting to get a real sense of those numbers until much later in the evening, but they will be with watching Wisconsin very closely. They want to see how abortion lands there and how close the margin could potentially be. But, Jake, one thing that former President Donald Trump will be doing that maybe no other presidential candidate has done is watching the returns come in from Wisconsin with someone who is also on the ballot in Wisconsin, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He fought to get his name off the ballot, but the Supreme Court there told him no because it was too late. He was already on the ballots that people were getting in the mail. And I am told Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is at Mar-a-Lago with Donald Trump tonight watching these returns come in. Obviously, the reason he fought to get his name off that ballot, Jake, is there is a concern that with the margin, as small as it could potentially be there, that it could have an effect. The margins are everything in this race as we are starting to see in these numbers coming in. So Trump will be watching that come in alongside RFK Jr., both of them on the ballot, Jake. All right, Caitlin Collins in West Palm Beach with the Trump campaign. Thanks so much. Let's go to David Chalian now, who has some exit polls from Michigan, Wisconsin, and Arizona, three battlegrounds we're hoping to hear from soon. David, what stands out as you look at the data from these three key states? Yeah, as the polls are about to close in these three critical battleground states, I wanted to look at Biden's approval rating just as sort of a baseline of the environment in these three states. Nationally, his approval rating has been updated to 40% in the exit polls nationally. In Arizona, you see here, Jake, he's at 43%. He's, uh, he's slightly above his national approval number in Arizona. If you look at Michigan, he's at 42% approval. Again, slightly above where he is nationally at 40. But Wisconsin's a different story. His approval rating, the sitting president, Joe Biden, is at 38% in Wisconsin. That is below where he is nationally. 61% of Wisconsin voters in this election disapprove of the job Joe Biden's doing. That's a hurdle that Kamala Harris is gonna have to jump here in the Badger State. Jake? All right, David Chalian, thanks so much. Uh, this would have been a very different race if Joe Biden uh, had stayed in it. I mean, if it ends with the Trump victory, and we have no idea how it's going to end, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But there's going to be a lot of finger pointing and recriminations and wondering and wondering. But these approval ratings for Joe Biden are brutal. Six in 10 in Wisconsin say that they don't approve of the president. I mean, it is brutal. And there's no other way to look at it. And that is, no question, a big headwind for Kamala Harris. 
uh, despite the fact that she has been trying to separate herself, despite the fact that she is saying that she wants to turn the page and that she's a new generation and all the things that we've heard in every one of her stump speeches, that is a number that there is no question the Harris campaign is looking at and saying, we hope that that doesn't bleed into Harris and the actual votes. Especially since the Trump campaign tried to do an effective job in tying her to that uh, administration, saying not just that she was the vice president, but that, look, you were in the room, you were always there, there were all kinds of decisions you could have made a difference and you didn't. Well, and then, of course, there was her, her gaffe on The View when she was asked, what would you have done differently over the last four years? And she said, nothing comes immediately to mind, which was probably not the, the best answer. Jake, if I can just look back, I think a lot of our viewers may, may just sort of big picture be looking at this and saying, Trump's got 105 electoral votes, right. and Harris has got 27, and there's a, a half a country of red and a little corner of blue. And I, and I think the point we need to make is at this, at this moment, and I think of it as a tennis match, there are no surprises. There have been no flips. Uh, nobody has broken serve, if you will. Right. All the states that Trump won in, uh, that he's won tonight, are states that he won in 2020. All the states that Harris won are states that Biden won in 2020. There's been no swing state that has been flipped yet. And there is every, just the way the states roll out, that the Republicans get a lot of the early calls and a lot of big red states, yeah. but there hasn't been any dramatic change in this vote. They're both on track to 270. Yeah. It depends on, on states there is this still is, not call. This is pretty, it's a good point. This is pretty much where everybody expected the There's race no to be at this point. We still have not uh, projected New York. We still have not projected California. I mean, there are plenty of places with right. a lot of delegates. That would dem I mean, not I, delegates. I, I will tell you, Democrats one place that is a get. little bit of a surprise. It's a surprisingly close race in Virginia, which has gone blue since 2008 in Obama, the last four cycles. And if you remember, Trump had a, in late October, had a rally there, and people went, what's he doing in Virginia? That's mm -hmm. a blue state. He's running That's very true, but there. there's only half of the uh, I understand, yeah. but it's 49-49 right now. But no, John, said, John King set the table on that earlier where he said, "Is this assuming she wins Virginia, is she going to win the, it the way Hillary Clinton won it with five points uh, in 2016, or is she going to win it the way that Joe Biden won it with 10 points in 2020? And I think... Which I think that there can be uh, something discerned from her victory uh, and how narrow it is one way or the other. And just going back to sort of the big picture, which I think is really important, Chris, and now we're looking at Virginia, which we were talking about before, but just uh, earlier we were looking at the returns coming in from the blue wall states, uh, from Michigan and from Pennsylvania, because we're actually finally seeing numbers. It is early, but they are important. Pennsylvania, we cannot stress enough how critical Pennsylvania is that you're looking at right now is to Kamala Harris. Donald Trump, if things go the way that they traditionally go uh, for a Republican, unlike 2020, uh, he could win the White House without Pennsylvania. It is hard to see in a lot, most of these paths, Kamala Harris winning the White House without Pennsylvania. And you see there 68%. That's what she has now. It is still extremely early, only 13% in. Right, and this is the point that Chris is making about the larger electoral map. It also applies to the vote that we see in Virginia and the vote that we see in Pennsylvania. Uh, if, if Kamala Harris wins Pennsylvania, and who knows, she's not going to win it with more than 60% of the vote. That's crazy. No. Like, it's going to be, it's, it is anticipated to be razor thin. We're still waiting for all the votes to come no. in. You know, so brew a pot of coffee. Uh, sit Many back. Pots. We got a lot. We got a lot of votes to, to to look at. Let's go back to Aaron Burnett. And Aaron, voting's about to end in three of the crucial battleground states uh, that we are watching and that you are in charge of at your battleground command center. The command center, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona. Now, when you're talking about 60 percent, obviously it's not going to end up that way in Pennsylvania. You look at that blue wall. You look at Michigan. Uh, Jim Shudo is in Detroit, and Jim, where you are now, this is the nuts and bolts that I think everybody wants to hear about, which is how the counting is actually happening. So tell us about where you are. This is an absentee ballot counting center. <laughs> That's right, in Detroit. And uh, they had about, they were expecting about 100,000 
absentee ballots in Detroit, but, but this is key. Because of changes in Michigan state election laws in 2022, they were able to begin counting those absentee ballots received before Election Day prior to Election Day. So at this point, they've already counted 92,000 of about 100,000 expected absentee ballots, uh, and they expect when those 8,000 come in over the next couple hours, it's not going to take them long to finish up that count. In fact, we heard a short time ago that here in Detroit, they expect that by midnight tonight or perhaps a bit after, they will have counted not just the absentee ballots in Detroit, but early voting ballots, ballots uh, and, and voting that took place today as well. So you're seeing the effects of that law, which allows for counting to begin as early as last Monday. One more note, and this is important, Aaron, because in 2020, this site in downtown Detroit became the scene of protests and unfounded claims of fraud in the midst of that frantic absentee ballot ballot co counting, in part because of you, you have that law, you were able to start early. We're not seeing any of those protests here now. And there's going to be a truck arriving in the next couple of hours, going to pull up at that door there with absentee ballots collected from drop boxes around the city as well. Again, that's not fraud. That's not vote dumping. That's part of the process of counting these votes here, and they expect it to move very quickly tonight. All right, very quickly, we'll see. And, and they have said they expect to be overall for the state of Michigan faster than last year, which, of course, was uh, yeah. the day after midday. Uh, Secretary of State said she hoped it would be a little bit earlier than that. Well, we'll see as the count comes in. Kyung Law is at a Maricopa County counting facility. Maricopa County, uh, biggest in Phoenix, fastest growing in the country, as they say. Kyung, one of the most important counties for the entire election. For the entire election, that's why you have so many reporters here. That's why we are watching Maricopa County so closely. And, and let's take a look at the clock. We only have a few more minutes, about seven more minutes, before polls close here in Arizona. I want you to take a look at what we are watching, though, here at the county. What's happening here on that split screen, that other video that you're looking at, that's the inside of the vote count, the tabulation center. They, they are looking at the ballots. They are processing ballots. All of this is with the early vote. After the polls close, about an hour after polls close here in Arizona, we are anticipating to get the first results out of Arizona. That will be only the early vote, the ballots that have been processed up until Election Day. And then, as the night moves on, Aaron, those ballots that are out at the vote centers will be processed, they're counted, separated in there, and then brought over here to the tabulation center to be processed. And that information is going to start to come out as well. So um, it is a multi-step process. It takes time. There has to be signature verification. The ballots have to be cured here in Maricopa County. But, but something I want to address very quickly, because this is something that's happening right here in Arizona as we watch this clock wind down before polls close, is that there's still long lines at some of the spots that we are watching at some of these vote centers. Um, at, at Mesa Community College, where we were at, and then you're going to check real quick, it's still an hour long line. If you are in line when wow. polls close at, at 7 o'clock local time, Aaron, you will still be allowed to vote. All right, which is which is amazing and it is amazing that people are doing that and waiting. Uh, it, it, that is something as you said that everyone should be happy about but amazing to sit there late at night, say I'm going to sit and wait another hour or two to vote. As both campaigns hope they will. All right, Kyung, thank you very much. And let's go back to the voting desk. As these counts are coming in and people have questions about how it's happening, what's happening, where. Uh, Pam, uh, Macomb County in Michigan, what are you seeing there? Well, Aaron, I just got off the phone with this key swing county in Michigan from the county clerk, Anthony Forlini, and he tells me he's actually hopping in his car now with a police escort to get tabulator memory sticks because they're delayed with the results coming in. Why? Well, he says it's because there were very long lines when the polls are supposed to, were supposed to close at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so they had to delay closing and stay open until everyone had the opportunity to cast their votes. Officials are tabulating the results right now, but those first results from Macomb were supposed to be reported around 9 p.m., just five minutes from now. I'm told by the clerk it's going to be later than that due to the long lines. According to the clerk, there were over 122,000 early votes cast in person there and 182,000 mail-in ballots as of yesterday. They're on track to have more than 200,000 mail-in ballots, he says. But given the high early voting turnout, he told me that he, the expectation there was that there would be lackluster turnout today. That is not the case in that key county. Overall in Michigan, let's look at the numbers here. The Michigan Secretary of State says more than 3.4 million voters cast their ballots early or by mail. That 
That's nearly 47% of registered voters. And listen to this. Another 85,000 absentee ballots re returned to polling centers today. Let's go over to Milwaukee. They've had some issues over there in Milwaukee today. They're going to have to retabulate about 30,000 ballots after problems with the county machines were discovered. All 13 tabulating machines are being set to zero. The ballots will be put through again. It's going to take time. They had initially estimated there the ballot count from the absentees would be done around midnight. Now it's more likely around 2 or 3 a.m. And then in Arizona, I spoke to a source there in Maricopa County, the largest county, that it's taking longer than expected to process early ballots. The first release of 1.1 to 1.2 million ballots of those early ballots at about 10 p.m. Eastern tonight will only account for early votes through last Tuesday, October 29th. That is less than the initial estimate that the first drop would be comprised of ballots through at least Friday, they thought. So it's going more slowly there. One more thing I want to note, I'm told they're going to keep up 24-hour shifts in Maricopa to keep things moving. Hmm. They understand how important it is to get those results out, those accurate results out as quickly as possible. All right, Pam, thank you very much. You take all of that together, look at where we are. What do you see, John King? That tells me to tell the people at home either slow down on the popcorn or make some more uh, because <laughs> we're going to be at this a while and maybe brew an extra pot. Uh, I just want to start in Michigan because Pam was just talking about Macomb County, Michigan. You see Detroit right here. This is Wayne County. We have no votes. The reason we can't say much about Michigan right now is we have zero votes in the largest population center. And then she mentioned Macomb County, which is right here, blue collar. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, this is where they were studying Reagan Democrats, right? Why were union auto workers voting for Ronald Reagan for president? That debate continues out there right now. It was out there just about a month ago. It's a huge test out there, but it's very early in Michigan, only 8%. So let's come back out to the battlegrounds where we have more votes. Let's check here. Only up to 15% of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The vice president with a big lead. Pennsylvania's not going to end. No matter who wins Pennsylvania, it's not going to end a 30-point race. We just know that as we count more votes. So we'll wait and try to get more in in Pennsylvania. This is one of the surprises. A lot of surprises on the map right now. Unlikely to end this way. But you see the vice president leading in Kansas, the vice president leading in Missouri, the vice president, even though we've already projected Arkansas, that's just early votes. The votes will come in. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. We're open to surprises here, but we'll keep a look at it. A surprise that has a lot of votes counted so far is Virginia. They're almost up to the halfway mark here, and Donald Trump is ahead in the state Joe Biden carried four years ago by 10 points, by 10 points. So let's see. One of the things we do at this point when you get up to almost half of the vote is what's missing, right? This is live outstanding votes. The larger the circle, the more votes are out in an area. The color of that circle tells you how the voting is going so far. So you see these big circles in Richmond and the suburbs, huge circles, and then smaller circles within them in the Washington, D.C. suburbs. So there are a lot of Democratic votes still to be counted. Vice President can't like that right now. You do not like being tied in Battleground, Virginia right now, but there are a lot of votes still to be counted, and you can tell from that a lot of them are Democratic, so we'll see. Same test in North Carolina, up to 38% of the vote. Trump with a narrow lead there. Let's just bring it up and look. Live outstanding votes. Again, your biggest outstanding votes are in the Democratic areas, Charlotte, Raleigh-Durham, Winston-Salem, Asheville, and Wilmington down there. So you have a very competitive race right there right now. You'd rather be Donald Trump and you'd rather be ahead, but there's a lot of vote counting to do. And again, this is one of the tightest of the battlegrounds. Virginia, a bit of a surprise, Jake. More counting elsewhere. All right, John King, voting is about to end in 15 states. The second biggest wave of results this evening. 163 electoral votes will be up for grabs, and we're watching several crucial battlegrounds. CNN's going to bring you this projection right now. CNN projects that Texas will go to Donald Trump. The state of Texas, as expected to Donald Trump, with its big bucket of 40 electoral votes. CNN also projects that North Dakota will go to Donald Trump. As expected, North Dakota with its three electoral votes. Two more for Trump now. CNN projects that South Dakota will go to Donald Trump. South Dakota, as expected, with its three electoral votes to Donald Trump. And CNN projects that Wyoming will go to Donald Trump. Wyoming with its three electoral votes. CNN is not making any projections in the following states that just closed their polls. Arizona, that's a big battleground. Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, battleground Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, and battleground Wisconsin. Let's look at the electoral map now. Donald Trump has 154 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 27 electoral votes. 270 are needed to win. Let's bring you a key race alert now. In battleground Pennsylvania, Kamala Harris in the lead with 64.4% of the vote. Donald Trump has 34.7% of the vote. Kamala Harris in the lead there with 326,000 plus votes. Only an estimated 16% of the vote has been counted in Pennsylvania. 
in Battleground, Michigan. Kamala Harris in the lead, 54.8% of the vote. Donald Trump with 43.3% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 55,000 plus vote lead. That's with only an estimated 8% of the vote counted in Michigan, still very early in Michigan. In Battleground, North Carolina, Donald Trump in the lead there now, 51.8% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 47.1% of the vote. Donald Trump with a more than 106,000 vote lead. That's with 39% of the estimated vote counted in Battleground, North Carolina. In Battleground, Georgia, Donald Trump in the lead there, 52.8% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 46.6% of the vote. Donald Trump has a healthy 221,000 plus vote lead. That's with an estimated 66% of the vote counted in Georgia. About two thirds of the vote in Georgia has been counted. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, Donald Trump in the lead there now with 49.3% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 48.7% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 13,334 vote lead. That's with half the vote counted in the Commonwealth of Virginia, 50% counted there in Virginia. In the state of New Hampshire, Kamala Harris has 53.6% of the vote. Donald Trump has 45.7% of the vote. Kamala Harris in the lead there by roughly 16,000 votes. That's with about a quarter, 25% of the estimated vote counted in the granite state of New Hampshire. In Ohio, Donald Trump in the lead, 52.9% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 46.3% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 197,000 plus vote. That's with half the vote counted in Ohio, 50% of the vote counted in Ohio. Let's go to John King at the Magic Wall. John. Jake, let's start with the context, what you just went through. I'm gonna wander over to this wall here just to show the race to 270 at the moment. Uh, if you're a Republican, you might be saying, wow, this is a rout. If you're a Democrat, you might be saying, oh my goodness, we should be worried. No, we're early in the night. As Chris Wallace said, I love the analogy, nobody has broken serve yet. As in every red state here, Donald Trump won in 2020 when he lost the White House. Every blue state on the map so far, Joe Biden carried when he won the White House. What don't we have? Uh, we don't have Rhode Island, we don't have Connecticut, we don't have New Jersey, we don't have Illinois just yet, long time blue states. So as we move west and as the count advances in some of the, mo New York as well, some of the most reliably blue states, this map will change uh, in the near future, at least that is our expectation, we'll keep an eye on it. That's the path to 270. You get there by filling these states in red and blue. So let's see, again, an unusual map at the moment just because the vote count is early or because we're gonna have the most surprising election of my lifetime. But in Nebraska right now, statewide, uh, you have the vice president winning, but you see most of the votes are out here. Uh, she's not so much worried about the statewide vote. She'd love to win Nebraska, don't get me wrong. Uh, Nebraska's second congressional district is right here in the Omaha area. Nebraska and Maine award electoral votes based on congressional district, the two states that do that. So eastern Nebraska is what matters most to the vice president. If We'll see if Nebraska stays blue. Again, to its south, the state of Kansas, 29% uh, of the vote in, but you see all this? Those are, that's, you know, if you're playing Legos, that's Donald Trump. That's how he builds his buildings right there, those small rural counties all across America, especially in the heartland here. So Kamala Harris, the vice president, ahead with 52% of the vote. It's all over here. Kansas City, Missouri, the suburbs here, the more blue areas, the college towns and the more urban areas in Kansas is why she's ahead right now. It's only 29% of the vote. We'll watch as that map fills in. Again, Missouri, when I started doing this in 1988, spent a lot of time in Missouri with Michael Dukakis. It's not a battleground state anymore, but at the moment, it's 51%, but it's only 7%, and again, you see votes coming in in the suburbs just to the west of St. Louis, suburbs just to the east of Kansas City. That's why the Democrat is leading at the moment as we go through it. So now let's get to the states that we actually think will be the battlegrounds in the end. We'll keep looking, we'll keep looking, open to surprises here, but let's check in on the big ones. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, still at 16%. This is a 30-point race, just shy of a 30-point race in a state we know is gonna be decided by one or two points. Uh, so we'll continue to watch to see. I check in on it just to see if the vote count has gone up. It has not in a while, still 16%. Same with Michigan. We come over, we're up to 10% here right now, uh, 53 to 45. Again, if there's an eight point lead in Michigan, then you have a blowout. You expect this to be very close in the end. We're missing a lot, right? Earlier tonight, Grand Rapids was red for Donald Trump. That's Kent County out here. Right now, you see it's almost a tie uh, right there. This is one of the battlegrounds within the battlegrounds. Fiercely, formerly reliably red, now a closely fought suburban area around Grand Rapids. We'll keep an eye on that, but still nothing out of Wayne County, Detroit. I just wanna come up here to Ingham County. This is where Michigan State is. If this ends the night there, Donald Trump's gonna feel very good about his Michigan chances, but we're at 3%. Students here, state capital, government town, should be blue by the end of the night. If it's not, that would tell you something huge. So let's come to where we have more votes in these battlegrounds. Again, I just wanna check on Virginia again. This is our surprise at the moment. Uh, we're up to 50% of the vote. 
and you have Donald Trump with a very narrow lead. I did this a moment ago. I just want to do it again for people at home. Most of the outstanding votes, these circles tell you, the larger the circle, the more outstanding votes were still waiting to be counted. And the, the color tells you how the vote's coming in so far in that area. So you see a lot of blue up here. Virginia now has become a blue state because of the Washington, D.C. suburbs in Northern Virginia. This, the places, the counties within 25, 35 minutes, depending on traffic drive. So that's out there, plus Richmond and the suburbs around there. We'll see. Donald Trump is remarkably in play in this state, and this would be even at close. Even if it's close, it might tell you something about what's going to happen to its south in North Carolina. They're not twins, but they're very similar, Virginia and North Carolina. North Carolina actually has a higher African-American population. So if you're the vice president, that's part of your base. Here's Donald Trump with a lead, 52, 41% reporting. Again, should the Harris campaign be nervous? Both campaigns will be nervous about Battleground North Carolina. It's going to go back and forth. But again, you see, you know, there's still some large pockets of Democratic votes, also some pretty good-sized pockets of Republican votes in a battleground state. This one's going to take a while to sort out, but you see where the outstanding votes are. I didn't get to this last time in Georgia, so let's go down and look at Battleground Georgia and bring that up here right now. We're up to 68% of the vote in Georgia, and you have 53 to 46. So if you're in the Trump campaign, you're thinking with, you know, I'm more than two-thirds of the vote counted. You start to feel good about a lead that big, especially in a state that was, what, 11,700 votes uh, four years ago. But let's see what's left out. Where are the outstanding votes? And you see right there why in the Harris campaign you're nervous. You're checking in with all your field captains and your precinct and your county people. But you see right there, you see those giant circles right there and a bigger another big circle over here. There are still a lot of areas that we know vote disproportionately Democratic where votes are to be counted in Georgia. I just want to come back and make one more observation here. You see that 242,000 vote lead. It is a little after 9 o'clock on Tuesday night. If you go back to 2020, Donald Trump was leading Georgia by 244,000 votes at 9 o'clock on Tuesday night, election night in 2020. It was 244,000 votes then. It's 242,000 votes now. Joe Biden carried Georgia. Doesn't mean Kamala Harris will this time. It just means we need to count all the votes. And you come back out and take a look again to see if the map has changed at all. Uh, Texas and Florida have gone with back. Ohio has gone back to where you expect it to go back, and that lead seems to be growing. I want to just check in again on this battleground here. Still at 18 percent there. And so I'm going to do something now. This is an exercise. This is an exercise. But you see Trump leading in North Carolina and Trump leading in Georgia. I just want to switch the map here and come over to the race for 270. Okay? This is an if. This is an if. It's not it. We're nowhere near there. We have a lot of votes to count there. But why is this so important? When you take battleground states off the board, when we're able to project and call them, it changes the chess of getting to 270. If Donald Trump were to hold that, he's leading there now. It's close. It's close. There's plenty of votes still for the vice president to catch up. We have to wait and see what happens. But if Donald Trump takes those two, the vice president of the United States needs to win that. That's what makes the math interesting. She needs that 19 votes right there. Because if Donald Trump gets that, Donald Trump gets that, it gets him to the finish line. So if that happens, that becomes essential. We're not there yet, Jake, but uh, we just like to do the math in our head as we go through the scenarios. All right, John King and CNN can now bring you a new projection. CNN projects that Kamala Harris will win the state of Delaware. Delaware, as expected, will go to Kamala Harris with its three electoral votes, the small wonder state. Let's take a look at the electoral vote count. Donald Trump has 154 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 30 electoral votes. 270 electoral votes are needed to win. Let's bring you a key race alert now. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Kamala Harris has 60.4% of the vote. Donald Trump, 38.7% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 284,000 plus vote win. I'm sorry, lead, 284,000 plus vote lead with an only an estimated 19% of the vote in, not even a fifth of the vote. Still a lot of votes to count in Pennsylvania. In Battleground, Michigan, Kamala Harris with 53.1% of the vote. Donald Trump has 44.9% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 46,000 plus vote lead. Only a tenth of the vote has been counted in Michigan, 10%, still very early there. In North Carolina, Donald Trump in the lead with 51.9% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 46.9% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 119,000 plus vote lead. That's with 41% of the estimated vote counted in North Carolina. In Battleground, Georgia, Donald Trump in the lead there, 52.7% of the vote. Kamala Harris with 46.6% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 225,000-plus vote lead. That's with 69% of the estimated vote in Georgia. They're really counting the ballots uh, in Georgia there. 69% of the estimated vote has been counted. 
In the Commonwealth of Virginia, Donald Trump still has his 49.5% lead, and now it's 49.4%. Kamala Harris is 48.6%. Donald Trump is 18,000 plus votes ahead of Kamala Harris right now, with more than half, 52% of the estimated vote counted in the Commonwealth of Virginia. In New Hampshire, Kamala Harris in the lead with 53.3% of the vote. Donald Trump has 46% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 17,000 plus vote lead. That's with more than a quarter, 28% of the estimated vote in the Granite State of New Hampshire counted. In Ohio, Donald Trump still in the lead there, 53.9% of the vote. Kamala Harris has 45%, 45.2% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 275,000-plus vote lead. That's with more than half, 52% of the estimated uh, vote counted in Ohio. John King? Let's look at the map, Jake, and one of the wonders as we get into the 9 o'clock hour, and this will be in the 10 o'clock hour, 11 o'clock hour, I suspect, into past midnight hours, but you're beginning to see more states fill in. Most of it is very early voting, uh, but it's still, as you just see as the polls close and we go from east to west, you now see much, many more states reporting votes. Let's just take a peek. We've already projected this one to be for Donald Trump. I just want to show you in North Dakota, these states feel they don't get respect because they're not huge electoral battlegrounds. I like to wander through and look at the votes and just show people out here. You see South Dakota starting to fill in slowly, very early on, 1% of the vote. This is a surprise at the moment. Nebraska, the vice president, so far carrying the state statewide, but we're only at 27%. And again, most of this gray you see from about here west, rural Republican farm country, where Trump tends to run it up. I'll just go back and give you the 2020 example of what I'm talking about. That's what tends to happen. And so we're not there yet. So when that happens, if that happens, uh, that number will change. Again, for the vice president, what you want to do is you want to be here. I'm just showing you Douglas County. It's the big piece of Nebraska's second congressional district. Uh, this is where you want to win. The blue dot, they call it. If she wins the blue wall, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, I went backwards. I went, uh, but if she wins those three and she wins Nebraska's second congressional district, she can get to 270 electoral votes. So we'll keep an eye on that as it plays out. First votes in Wisconsin, you see it's red at the moment. Uh, 796 to 479. Guess what? We have a long way to go in battleground Wisconsin. Just for context, when Joe Biden won it four years ago, it was 1.6 million votes. So we are in the infancy stages of counting the votes in battleground Wisconsin, and you watch as it plays out. One of the places we'll watch here, I'll just show you now, zero votes in yet, uh, the Green Bay area, Brown County. This is one of the key tests. Can the vice president hold on to the president's share of white working class voters? Uh, I just want to show you as we go back in 2020, Joe Biden did not win Brown County, but he got 46% of the vote. The margins within the margins sometimes make the difference in a battleground state. Wisconsin settled by 20,000 votes, right? You look at that 46% for Joe Biden, and then you move back in time, and you see 42% for Hillary Clinton. That makes the difference. She lost the state. He won the state. So one of the things we will watch as the 2024 results come in is not just can she turn out the African-American vote in Milwaukee, not just can she compete in the suburbs, Waukesha, just to the west of Milwaukee, but can she hold her own? Just be as competitive as Biden was in some of these blue-collar counties. Long way to go there. Let's pop over to Michigan. As Jake just told you, we're only at 10 percent there, so not a lot to look at. Yeah, just move it up so you can see it a little bit better at home. Uh, the vice president has pulled ahead in Kent County. That's Grand Rapids, but it's early. And again, you're looking down here. Uh, I told you earlier, one of the warning signs was Washington, our county. This is where the University of Michigan is, Ann Arbor. If you move east here, Dearborn is over here near Detroit. Her, her question marks in Michigan are young voters and Arab American voters, right? You find the young voters here, University of Michigan campus, and again, you say, wow, that's a 30-point lead. What are we worried about that for? Uh, well, you're worried about it because the President of the United States had that four years ago. It's a county where, if you want to win Michigan, she, Joe Biden won by 154,000 votes, so you could say she has some to spare, if you will. She can lose a little bit in the coalition, but you don't want to lose, lose a lot. And I was at the Michigan campus just last week, and they have a very aggressive young voter turnout operation there. We'll see later in the night if those numbers change at all. That's Michigan. Let's come back out and come over to the home state of Mr. Tapper, still at 20%. It's bumped up just a little bit there. So what are we looking at? Let's move it up just a little bit. We have some votes. Erie County, as I told you earlier, 25 counties in America, twice for Barack Obama, then to Donald Trump, and then flip back to Joe Biden. Uh, so it's a bellwether county. Doesn't mean the person who wins Erie County is going to win the Commonwealth and win the presidency, but that's what's happened in the last several presidential elections. So you look, we're just starting. Just getting started in Erie County. Uh, 512 votes, just for context, it's going to take close to 70,000 votes to win that county. So we're just starting. That's one of them. Let's come back to 2024 and move over here to Northampton County. Again, right along the New Jersey border, not terribly far from Allentown. Uh, the vice president ahead there at only 22% of the vote uh, in. So that was, again, look how close it was. 
Joe Biden just barely carried it. Donald Trump just barely carried it four years before that. That's the way it tends to end up. So we'll watch as that plays out. Here's something we do want to look at is Lehigh County. Uh, only 20% of the vote in here. If there is an impact from the Donald Trump Madison Square Garden event where so many insults were made about Puerto Ricans and about Mexicans and about Latino and Hispanic Americans, if you're going to see an impact, this is one of the places you might see it, right here. And that's why both Trump and Harris went to Allentown in the final days of the campaign to try to take advantage of it. We're only at 20% right there, but again, you're doing this for context. 62% for the vice president. You go back in time to Lehigh County 2020, 53 percent. If the vice president can overperform Joe Biden in Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, she's in good shape. So we watch that as it plays out. We're only at 20 percent of the vote right now. It would come down to it. That's only 20. That's only 20 percent. So then you come out more. Where else are you looking in Pennsylvania? Let's bring this up. You also had the vice president door knocking in Berks County. Berks County at the moment is blue. If Berks County ends the night blue, my bet would be on Vice President Harris winning Pennsylvania. Why? Let's look at it. Let's show you where it is. Here's Philadelphia. Here's the close-in suburbs around it. And then as you drive out, what used to be farm country, now you see the homes lined up, right? People moving further out because that's the only place they can afford a home. That's places like Berks County, Pennsylvania. Half the vote counted, a little bit shy of that right now, 51 to 48, right? Let's go back in time. That was a 53% county for Donald Trump in 2020 when he lost Pennsylvania, and it was a 53% county in 2016 when he won Pennsylvania. So if you're the vice president of the United States, you're keeping an eye on this one. If you can keep this blue, your chances to win the Commonwealth are improved dramatically so. Spent a lot of time there over the last year. It is interesting. Found a lot of Nikki Haley voters there, a lot of Reagan Republicans who don't like Donald Trump, who were kind of tormented about voting for Trump or voting for Harris. So we'll keep an eye on that one there. Then you move out here. This is the number two in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Allegheny County is Pittsburgh and the suburbs around it. The labor vote, the blue collar vote a smaller African-American population, but the urban vote Democrats need. So she's at 68% when you look at that there. You come back in time, he was at 59%. So again, we're early. We're early. Let me bring come back to 2024 and come out. It's 40%. So it's early. These tend to be early votes, which tend to favor Democrats more. So we want to wait and get more to see if that's contextual. At the moment, she's outpacing the President of the United States and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in some key places. We will see if that holds up. The flip side. Pick one. Tioga County, along the border, northern border of Pennsylvania. Donald Trump getting 71% there. Half the vote is in. Again, this is Donald Trump's secret. Just runs it up in small rural counties across America. 75%. So keep an eye on that. It's early. We're still counting votes right there. But is the Trump base turning out in the same math numbers in a place like Pennsylvania? He needs to run it up in places like this. There's Bradford. Again, it's only 5% reporting. 75%. 71%. Again, even in these small rural counties, the early vote, there's not a lot of Democratic votes there, but a lot of it comes out in the early votes, if you're following along, when they count it. So let's be careful to not make any projections, any you know, tough, lasting cement analysis, I guess I'll call it. But we'll keep an eye on that as we go through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Virginia, I, every time I come out, I wait to see if Virginia's going to flip back. We're still at 59 percent. The lead has narrowed somewhat. This would be a shocker. Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points, by 10 points. Even if it's closer, even if the vice president comes back, let's take a peek. Yeah, the, Demo the outstanding votes are still largely in Democratic. There's some Republican votes out there. You see the red dots, but the big circles are in Democratic areas. So the math is there for the vice president to recover. Uh, but even a close race in Virginia might tell you that it's a more competitive environment for Donald Trump, especially, Jake, as we've talked before. Uh, can he do well in the suburbs? And then you see we're looking at Virginia as kind of a, you know, it's interesting. What lessons can we learn there? Well, again, they're not exactly the same, but they're similar. You come down to North Carolina. We're above 50 percent now. It's close. This is welcome to North Carolina. This is yeah. what this is what it's going to be. And so you just take a look and you say, you know, what's missing, right? Where are they still counting votes? Again, Mecklenburg County, Charlotte and the suburbs around it, African-American voters, upscale suburbs around it, key to the Democratic coalition. A lot of votes there. A lot of votes in Raleigh-Durham, the research triangle, again. And so you see that happening right there. And let's see, we go back here and come back up to Virginia, and we see 49.4. 48% there. Again, pretty remarkable. 17,000 votes. Again, we've got a long way to go. 45% of the votes still to be counted. But Joe Biden won it by 10 points. So if you're the, in the vice president's camp, you're a little nervous about that. Let's bring in uh, David Chalian uh, to get some insights uh, now on the outstanding vote uh, in Virginia, which is, as of now, a little tighter than I think the Harris campaign would like. Yeah, Jake, we're trying to determine how much of this vote we're looking at now is pre-election vote 
Our estimate right now is that we are looking at in Virginia, 39% of the vote that's in is pre-election vote. That, we think, at the end of the day, is going to go up to 52%. So there's still quite a bit of pre-election vote to come in here. And Kamala Harris is winning the pre-election vote by about 17 points. So as more of that early vote gets funneled into the count in Virginia, you can imagine there's real room here for Harris to grow, Jake. All right, David, and we have some projections right now for you at home. CNN can project that Illinois will go to Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, as expected, will win Illinois in its 19 electoral votes. CNN can also project that Rhode Island will go to Kamala Harris, as expected. Kamala Harris will get the four electoral votes from Rhode Island. So where are we on the electoral map as of right now? Donald Trump has 154 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 53 electoral votes. 270 are needed to win. Neither of them is within uh, spitting distance of that. Let's take a look at the actual votes coming in from the battlegrounds that we have not projected. In battleground Pennsylvania, Kamala Harris in the lead, 57.5% of the vote. Donald Trump, 41.5% of the vote. Kamala Harris with a 258,000-plus vote lead. That's with about a quarter, 23% of the estimated vote in Pennsylvania uh, counted as of now. In battleground Michigan, Kamala Harris with 53.7% of the vote. Donald Trump with 44.3% of the vote. Harris with a 64,000-plus vote lead. That's with an estimated 12% of the vote counted in Michigan. Still very early in Michigan. In battleground North Carolina, Donald Trump in the lead. 50.7% of the vote. Harris with 48.1% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 75,000-plus vote lead. That's with more than half, 51% of the estimated vote counted in Battleground, North Carolina. In Battleground, Georgia, Donald Trump still holding on to his lead, 52.9% of the vote. Harris has 46.4% of the vote. Donald Trump right now with a 249,000-plus vote lead. I'm sorry, now it's a 255,000 vote lead. That's with an estimated 71% of the vote counted in Battleground, Georgia. In Virginia, Donald Trump in the lead as of now, 49.3% of the vote. Kamala Harris has 48.7% of the vote. Donald Trump is ahead by more than 15,000 votes. That's with more than half, 56% of the estimated vote, but still a lot of vote to come in in the Commonwealth of Virginia. In New Hampshire, Harris with 53.4% of the vote. Donald Trump with 45.9% of the vote. Harris with an 18,000-plus vote lead. That's with under a third of the vote counted in New Hampshire, 30% of the estimated vote counted in New Hampshire. In Ohio, Donald Trump in the lead, 54.3% of the vote. Harris with 44.8% of the vote. Donald Trump with a 332,000-plus vote lead. That's with almost 60%, 58% of the estimated vote counted in the Buckeye uh, state. Now let's go to John King at the Magic Wall. John. So, Jake, you lay out the results, and there are some surprises there, right, at least where we are right now. So we just want to go back and follow up where we were. David Chelling was talking about some of the outstanding vote we know in Virginia is early vote, and that percentage is going to jump, and we know that the vice president is doing quite well in that vote. So I just want to show you what he means by how this can change. Again, Donald Trump's lead has been shrinking. It was 16,000 not that long ago. It's 12,395 now. Uh, look at the northern Virginia suburbs here. I just want to show you these circles help us understand where are there live outstanding votes, meaning votes that we know are out there that have not been counted yet. All right, you see the big circles, the biggest circles around the northern Virginia suburbs, also Richmond and the suburbs around that, and some big Republican circles down here, Virginia Beach area, and some here in the suburbs more to the south, the exurbs south of Richmond. But I want to focus up here and just to show you why you can say early on, you say, whoa, what's happening here? But then things can change pretty quickly when large population centers report their votes. So let's take Fairfax County. In, it's the largest of the suburban counties. It's the number one county population-wise in Virginia. Uh, the vice president's getting 66% of the vote, 63% of the vote in. Look at the number where she is, though, 250,000. We know turnout is robust, right? So we should be somewhere around 2020 when we end 2024, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, but somewhere around it. 250,000 votes right now. If you go back in time, you see 419,000 votes. So if, if she's winning 60-plus percent, the president was winning 70% four years ago, you have Vice President Harris winning 66, a little below, a little below. Virginia looks like it's going to be a little bit more competitive this year. But you can see just right there in that one county, there's a lot of votes still out, and she's winning disproportionately in the math right now. That can change, but it generally tracks when you get above 60 percent of the vote. And so just in that one county right there, the math, when those votes come in, the math can change. So it doesn't mean it will, uh, but there, there's more than enough Democratic votes still outstanding, or votes outstanding in Democratic areas is the better way to put it, for that to happen. So let's check in on the other battlegrounds as we go through. Uh, this one, again, go back in time. 
This was the closest Donald Trump victory in a battleground state. Of the, of the battlegrounds, he won 74,000 votes, 483, 74,483. Four years ago, he's 110 ahead right now, but we're only at 54% of the vote, right? So you see these gray areas, what are those? That's where you have no votes in yet. So we're still waiting, some of these smaller counties, this one, you know, this the tenth of the 100 counties population-wise, so it's not tiny, Gaston County along the border right there. Uh, but the, the big population centers are Charlotte, let's just see how much we have. Only 10% of the vote in Mecklenburg County. So if you're looking at this number, you're saying, okay, Donald Trump's got a four-point lead, you know, three and a half, four-point lead in North Carolina. But then you come here, it's the largest Democratic area, only 10% of the vote. And again, look where we are, 36,000 votes for the vice president right now. You go back four years, 378,000 votes. So we just need to slow down with any, where we go in here in North Carolina and count more votes because there are more than enough votes out there. Again, if you come out statewide and just apply the entire graph to the whole thing, live outstanding votes, uh, you see some Republican pockets here, but where are the biggest circles, right? Where are the biggest circles? Charlotte in the suburbs, Raleigh Durham in the suburbs, Winston Salem in the suburbs, Wilmington in the suburbs, Asheville in the suburbs. Doesn't mean the vice president's going to win North Carolina. By no means means the vice president's going to win North Carolina. It just means there are a lot more votes to be counted in areas that right now are blue, and some of them blue by a pretty lopsided margin. Now, just to be fair, you see all these little tiny dots? There's a lot of little tiny red dots, right? right? They're not going to match the vote count here and here, but there's a lot more of them, right? So when you come out and you just take a look, Again, I'm a broken record sometimes, but this is the wonder of Donald Trump. This is how he runs up the math. 72% uh, there, only 25% reporting there, but 72% in Rutherford County, right down here along the border here. Let's just go back in time and take a peek. 72%. Donald Trump is consistent. He is the constant in this race. In most places you look, he's getting what he got in 20, 2020, and he's getting what he got in 2016. He's pretty constant and pretty consistent, but 24,000 votes there with 72% four years ago. And so then you come forward there, we're only at 25%. So again, if it comes in around the turnout of four years ago and it stays at that percentage, there's a chunk of votes there and in many of these other small rural counties still for Donald Trump, which is why we count late into the night and sometime into the morning. He gets small margins, but you add them all up, 20, 15, 20, 30 rural counties, you match them up against the one urban county, that's how you get a battleground state. Let's pop down to Georgia. We come down over here. This one here, again, in a state decided by...